Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 31 of Let's Play the Spiderweb Software Instant Classic Queen's Wish 2 The Tormentor. Love this icy scene here. I've got some thoughts here. Boom, let's go. <laughs> um, we met with the Rasa. And I was thinking about how the Rasa was surprised that I took the petition so quickly. And in my mind, I thought, well, I don't want to argue with the guy. I want to show like the initiative of being like, okay, we can handle this, you know, not show any weakness. But also in the process, I didn't show any leverage in terms of like, maybe I could get something out of them and leverage it. Like I could have said like, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't know where to find them. Or something and then that could have played into like some things where they could we could leverage that in our favor to get a better reward or benefit from the rasa end but you know hopefully our initiative shows shows up like well to the to the row like to the people of the row they see oh haven really is going to help us so anyway let's talk about the particulars um Rasa Luita continues to host you in his hall. He is consistently confident and cordial. You never lack for tea and snacks. It would be a calm, friendly meeting were it not for all of the guards. Um, you are the Rasa of the Lodaga. I have been given that honor. I hope I survive to serve for a long time. How did you become Rasa? To explain how the Rokash does things would take a lifetime. I don't think we entirely understand it. The final decision takes place on Prova Krug, our highest peak. The deliberations there tend to be violent and are always secret. How long have you served? I have held this post for three years. The clans of the Prova Krug are wild and they rarely hold the same opinion for two days. Yet they still seem to like me. I got part of my education in Haven itself. I gained a lot of knowledge of politics by studying your mother. What are your duties? I do as little as possible. The clans of the Lodaga violently insist on ruling themselves as much as possible. I mainly settle arguments between the clans of the Lodaga and between the Lodaga and the other provinces. The Roe never has a shortage of arguments. I would like to know more about the Lodaga. It is a beautiful, proud land. Ignore the insults directed at us by the other provinces. It is only jealousy. Travel our lands and see for yourself. I suspect you are eager to learn more. After all, Consort Darmal, your father, was born here. You have some local practices that concern me. I don't doubt it. However, the way we are, our clans, our raids, our ways we deal with our people, these are our business. I advise you, don't cause trouble. Our people suffer torments enough. Um, I'd like to know more about my father's clan. That is understandable. In a happier time, it would be possible. Right now, this is very difficult. I'm afraid that his clan is gone. Gone? Consort Darmal, in his life, provided many advantages to his clan. Your clan. When he died, a lot of other clans were jealous and they wanted revenge. Darmal's clan moved beyond their reach to a new prosperous land in the virgin wilds between here and Diandia. You need not worry about them now, but I suspect you don't have time to visit them. And none of them remain. Some of them stay in the Rokaj to speak for them and to trade. Some of them are sure to greet you and claim a relation. Not all of those claims will be honest. I wish I could tell you more. I'm sure this is a disappointment. What else would you like to know? I want to talk about Haven's rule here. We are controlled by Haven. The Ro are proud, independent people, but we have also spent much of our history controlled by other empires. We know that one day you will be gone. Until then, you're not the worst conqueror we have had. What do you think of Haven? I have known and been friends with many Havenites. I have traveled outside my land. I even received some of my education in Haven. My clan sacrificed much to give me these advantages, and I have honored them. I do not hate Haven. I do not see you as evil. How has being our vassal been for you? Being in Haven brings safety and trade. We are wealthier. Our children are more likely to survive to adulthood. 
Though these are not small things. There is a cost, and costs us freedom, costs us an idea of what it means to be Roe. Still, I would choose to remain in your empire if it were only my choice. What about our governor? That is a more difficult question. Governor Eato has served here a long time. He is old, tired, complacent, and full of wrong ideas about how to win our respect. He does not help you. Of course, that isn't my full opinion. I would ask that you explore more, learn about the results of his rule, then talk to me more. I see. Um, I'm ready to hunt some brigands. The guards around the hall are instantly alert. You see a few hints of smiles. Rasa Lawita says, The basic facts are clear. The raids started over the last few months. They soon became vicious and unusual, in no way like the normal raiding that is part of our lives here. There are a few of them in the southern Daga. To find where they are from and hunt down their leader, you will have to fight your way into the northern Daga. So who are the raiders? We don't know. They are very careful to not be trapped. They attack at night in cowardly ways. They don't let themselves be caught alive. That is strange behavior for Roe Raiders, but it is not the most unusual thing. How are the Raiders unusual? Some of them are cobwolves and cobwolves, mindless beasts with human forms. Somehow, the human Raiders get the beasts to come along with them and stay under control. We have no idea how. There are no Raiders near Azam? There were a few, but we hunted them down. My warriors made sure of it. They are dead or fled. The northern Daga is far wilder and has far fewer warriors to hunt raiders. They are the ones who need your help. What do you want me to do? The first step is to get you into the northern Daga. The main route is through Malachite Pass to the north. However, the main tower there has a large force of mindless cobwolves surrounding it. My soldiers are busy keeping the clans down here safe. I think clearing that tower of foes would be something that you want to do. Is that the only route to the northern Daga? There are other passes, but they are very difficult. Even native Roe have a hard time traveling them safely. It is far better for Haven to clear the main road. There are good reasons for you to want to liberate that tower. How can I clear Malachite Pass? There is a gated tower blocking the main road. It has been under siege by a swarm of cobwolves. They have a good position, making it hard to slay them. I'm sure they can't stand against the power of Haven. What foes can I expect there? Cobwolves mainly. They are clumping there. They haven't forgotten why they are there and wandered off yet, which is very strange. I'm sure they have support, but our scouts haven't been able to see it. Why is this something I'd want to do? The tower there is under siege. There are Havenite soldiers trapped inside. They have not been able to fight their ways out, and they are not, probably not in good condition. Liberating the tower would rescue some of your people. Haven soldiers are trapped there. Why? Your warriors are admirably brave. When the raids started, they could have fled, but some of them tried to hold the pass. They did not expect so large a force. Governor Otto knows that they are there, but he has done nothing to free them. We find this odd. Perhaps he can explain his reasons. Hmm. That is all I need for now. Then I bid you farewell. Return whenever you want. The door of the Rasa is always open. Okay. There's Ringenberg. Oh. Oh, I could steal so much from the Rasa. Oh, this stuff is not claimed. I will take it. Paper, paper, paper. Crude crystal. Consort Darmal. Consort Darmal is the late husband of Queen Sharon III of Haven. Born the son of a clan chieftain in the Lodaga, he met the queen when he was touring, when she was touring the eastern vassal state five years before her coronation. At the time of their meeting, the Rokaj was a neglected vassal, increasingly poor and restless. The princess met him while visiting the provinces of the Ro, hearing grievances. The two young, stubborn, quick-tempered nobles developed an unexpected liking for each other. Though it was widely considered a suboptimal match, Queen Sharon was insistent. They courted and were married two years later. They have three surviving children. Consort Darmal was a highly disciplined man and settled into the routine of Haven society surprisingly well. His wild nature only found release in his determination to hunt more and more dangerous game. His tragic death came from the stinger of a very large scorpion. Consort Darmal's diplomatic efforts resulted in great advantage and prosperity for the Rokaj, though these blessings drained away quickly after his death. Hmm. Oh. 
not going to steal. Ringenberg. You intercept an old dog and man with a double arm load of scrolls. He sets him down and gives you a little bow. Welcome, Prince. I am Ringenberg of the Northern Daga. I send our wise I serve our wise young Rasa and he told me to tend to your needs. How do you serve? Like all the other Rasas, Rasa Luita is given an assistant. I take care of a variety of minor tasks so that my master can pay attention to wrangling the clans. What do you do exactly? I make sure Rasa Luita's halls are properly tended to. I keep records and take notes. I temporarily serve in his place if he dies. My duties are similar to the councils of your governors. You think you're good at your job? I believe I'm one of the best in all of the row. After all, I am still alive. That is an issue? I am elderly, as you can see. Often, when a clan is angry at Arasa, they will send the Geld Nas to kill an official or assistant as a way of registering displeasure. I have made sure I'm more valuable to the Lodaga alive than dead. I have another question. Ringenberg follows you around in case you need anything. You know where, whenever he talks to you, he looks down at the ground. His robe obscures his wrinkled face. I'd like to know more about the Lodaga. It is a beautiful, stark, harsh, wild place. I came from the north, which is harsher and wilder. I can't describe it. You can only learn about the robe by existing in it. I am not a teacher, anyway. I study what the Rasa orders me to. Like cobwolves, for example. I spend more time controlling the city guard. Is the city guard unreliable? They are very reliable, just not to me. They all come from their clans, and they all want to help their clans. I watch them and make sure they are guarding the city for the good of the whole Lodaga. It is not a natural thing for them to do. Tell me about the Cobwolves. I am sure that you know more than I do. Those deadly, treacherous creatures are a plague in all of Haven. I only try to learn about them because there are so many of them in our hills of late. All I can say is, don't let them trick you. They are mimics. They don't think like people do, but they pretend. It's a trick to catch you off your guard. Tell me about the Rasa. Rasa Luita is young and strong. He is bold and, for one so young, wise. I would have preferred that he got to serve longer before being tested by the raiders. How long has he served? Only three years. Still, that is quite a milestone. If a Rasa is seen as not working out, the Geld Nas will usually retire him before two years have passed. We don't coddle incompetence like Haven does. What did he do about the raiders? Rasa Luita has mostly purged the southern Daga of raiders. There are few hiding out here and there, but the roads are mostly safe. However, he doesn't have the forces to reach the northern Daga. Happily, Haven does. Okay, thank you, Ringenberg. <clears throat> Treaty of the Vassalage between Haven and the Rokaj. We've seen that. Um, we serve outside clan. Old stonework buildings. Ugh, relevant lore. Are we going to have to steal the relevant lore? You know what? I'm starting to think... That's the second relevant lore we found inside a box. We're going to have to get our hands dirty a little bit. I'll take the relevant ore. Deep metal ore is just worth money. They can keep that. So any relevant lore I find, I will take it. It's just lore. Where it, like, I don't want where it dies. Um, I guess that's it for there then, right? So any rare lore I find, um... Where else was there rare lore? Or relevant lore, I should say. This was silver, coal, and gold. This was... Did we read this one? Yeah, Consort Darmal. Yeah, because to get the relevant lore, we're probably going to have to get our hands a little bit dirty. This is the trade hall. <laughs> Stoneworkers 
info. Okay, so I guess we're done here. Oh, we have to go check out the governor. And I don't think I entered all these houses. Ah! Ah! He does good. Um. Yeah, I feel bad about taking it, but it's just, it's just lore, like, Andesite Trade Post. Have you been here? No. Andesite. It stays quiet. Hmm. Merchant provides goods for the clans of the Southern Daga. He sells food, tools, and a wide variety of other supplies. He mainly specializes in weapons, though. Seems like he's wearing half of his stock on his body. He eagerly welcomes you into his shop. Can this be true? Can the mighty prince of the mightiest of empires be visiting my little store? I am Andesite. I have blades and such for even the most demanding hunter, made with the finest materials. So you're a weapons dealer. Among other things, I sell all sorts of mundane goods that I doubt you need. But in the Rokaj, in the Lodaga, there is always a great, great need for a reliable blade. And who do you sell to? Anybody who walks through the door. As long as you aren't obviously drunk or mad, I will deal fair with you. I can't judge why you need what you need. This is the land of the deep truth. Deep truth? In the Rokaj, speaking too plain tends to lead to death. We have to keep our truest beliefs hidden. So I can't truly know why you need to buy what you buy. The road trusts each other because we have to. You really ask no questions. Yes, and don't you want it that way? Does the Prince of Haven want to be interrogated by a humble merchant in some rustic land? What if the purchaser is a brigand or raider? Well, raiding is the way of the low daga. I can't pick and choose. If I do, there is a danger. What is the danger? I am a merchant, not a judge. If I am seen to favor one clan over another, I'll be made to answer for it. Maybe by an angry warrior. Maybe by the Geld Nas, if I make someone angry enough. I have another question. Andesite is constantly drawing daggers and swords to show you. He is justifiably proud of his wares. The Low Daga is a land of warriors and raiders, after all. His weapons are made with a wide variety of metals, some rare and precious. What do you know about the raider problem? I know there have been a lot more of them lately. Not Low Dogans, though. Outsiders, and they fight with Ka beasts. At least, there are those are the rumors in the inn. I have a hard time believing it. Cobb wolves fighting with us? Doubtful. Did you sell weapons to these raiders? Maybe. They don't have little signs on them saying bad raider. But I doubt I did. The number of raiders we're seeing, I couldn't have armed that many. Those raiders attacked my brother and me. Which is shameful. Which is madness. That only hurts the Rokaj. If someone tried to stab you with one of my daggers, I am really very, very, very sorry. What are the finest materials? It depends on the purpose, of course. We use bronze for the poor, steel for the practical. For the wealthy and noble, we are able to work the deep metal. What is deep metal? It is a strange metal, light and strong. It's found throughout the known lands, but the deposits of it are common in the Lodaga. It can be alloyed with steel to make a proper sword. Normally, a steel sword would be superior, except for one thing. Deep metal holds a magical enchantment better than plain steel. Where can we get this metal? Andesite smiles and scratches his chin. Some mine it. I need to trade for it. There is a possible source nearby. An old drake who, from time to time, trades with the row. I want an offer carried to this creature. Gold for deep metal. I think it'll tempt the greedy old beast. I just need someone to carry this message. Where is this drake? It lives in the fire pits to the northeast. Has for centuries. Called Fracas. It is a dangerous place, but it gives our young warriors a nice place to test their courage. You really think a drake will trade with you? A social creature, as its kind goes, keeps to itself unless it gets the greed itch. Then it will trade with lowly humans for a short time. The problem is talking to it. Why don't you contact the drake yourself? Well, it is social, but it is also a drake. It likes its privacy, and it's not afraid to eat a human that seems too weak. Normally, I wouldn't try to send a mighty prince with my message, but you might find the fire pits interesting for other reasons. When you ask what those might be, he shrugs. Um, I'd like to shop. Of course, please let me know. Let me show you my wares. I'm buying. Ooh, Bleeder Ruin. 
Runer, uh, Rune. Robron's helm, Dagon breastplate. That's pretty nifty. Dagon shield. <clears throat> and a rose side blade. What is the Dagon shield? Yeah, same deal. Except mine has augmentation slots. This is nothing too fancy. The bleeder rune, though, is a noise. And that was the Arita Go Tower. Let's see if they had deep or relevant lore. I forget where the relevant lore was that I uncovered recently. It was, um, Aaron Ponta. It was in the Kronos somewhere, or in the Tower of the Erudico itself. That's it. I wish I, sh I should make notes of this game, but... Sign says, Hall of the Governor, please report your complaint to Council. Well, I guess let's go talk to the Governor. Let's see how he's doing. Council Opal. Welcome. Be careful. You enter the Governor's Hall of Haven. This little plot of land belongs to your empire. For a moment, according to the law at least, you are home. Since you are here to interview and judge their governor, you inspect the hall. On the surface, everything seems fine. The guards seem competent. The floors are swept. All of the stonework and decor is designed to imitate the rustic clan folk of the Rokaj. Yet, everything is off. It is too quiet. There is no energy in the air. The guards salute properly, but then they grimly avoid your gaze. Time seems to slow down. The majestic meeting halls to the north. Governor Otto of the Lodaga awaits. Or Eato. Probably Eato. After wandering around Azam for a while, you're surprised to come face to face with a woman. The Lodagans only let men go outside during the day, it seems. She is a Havenite, young and a little starstruck. She runs up and gives you a sharp bow. Welcome, Prince. It is an honor to see you. I am Council Opal of the Haven Hall. The governor told me to help you if I can. So you work for Governor Eato. She nods eagerly. It's a real honor. I am very young for a council, by five years, if not ten. This is my first overseas post, and I've leapt at the chance to come here, she thinks. It's uncomfortable at times. I didn't know much about the Lodaga when I volunteered to come. Now I know uh, Ayato sends me out into the town when he shouldn't. <laughs> what do you do for him? A governor's time is very valuable. They spend lots of time looking out for Haven, thinking and planning, always being two steps ahead. I take care of all the little jobs and look after the hall. I'll also give advice if he ever asks for it. What do you think of his rule? The smile vanishes. My job is to serve him, not judge him. I'm only a council. You're a prince. You do the judging. He sends you out when he shouldn't? He often sends me into the town to do errands. I think it's to remind the Lodoggins that Haven is different. We're more advanced, at least in the way we treat women. How does the Lodaga treat women? Some vassals place women in places of power. Some prefer men. Here, the clans keep their women locked away. It's common in the more violent, unstable vassal states. The men go out to work and trade. The women are locked away. Is that their only possible fate? Not quite. Some of the more ambitious, talented women leave the Lodaga. They work and trade in the cities of the other provinces. Some join the Erudico. A few rare specimens leave the Rokaj entirely. It's a hard choice leaving one's home. What do you think of this practice? Obviously, I don't approve. Then again, they are only vassals. The governor says we must not provoke them. Their backward ways are not our business as long as Haven stays strong and wealthy. kind of pushy to come into someone's land and be like, we're changing this. Um, suppose we'll have to tolerate it. 
Agreed. It is painful, but the Roe are very, very stubborn. We can't change them. We can only make them angry. That's what I thought. Um, Council Ober Opal is quite eager to speak with you. She answers lots of questions about the low dog gun havens all here, even questions you haven't actually asked. She talks about everything except the governor she serves. I'd like to know more about the raider attack attacks. You should talk to the governor and the Rasa. I'm not able to talk about matters of war. I'm pretty new at being council. I am here to judge Governor Eato. Really? I suppose that makes sense. It's a full diplomatic mission, I hear. I can't help you. I follow the orders of my superior. I don't judge him. So you work for Governor Eato? Oh, yeah. Um, Governor Eato asked you to help me? He did, within certain limits. He won't provoke the low doggins, but he knows that you will need more supplies. I need more resources. I can help with that. Well, I can help you if you help us. We can get you stone and other supplies. The Flint Pit claim was providing more than we needed. At least, that is what I found out on my own. I wouldn't want to help you without permission. If Governor Ayato says I can give you supplies, I can help you get them. I can use more soldiers. The Governor has soldiers, that's true. However, he's holding them in reserve. He has plans. I can't let you command them, not without word from the palace. I will need command of your forces. All of our forces? I'm sorry, Prince. We can't let you take command without permission from the palace. There's rules for these things, even for our prince. That's all for now. Thanks. The Doggins fight. The ice is coming. I can answer all questions. You are welcome to Azam by the governor, hand chosen by Haven to look after Haven's interests here. Haven's trade and soldiers are all controlled by this man. This exhausted elderly man. He looks like he's been here for decades, slowly decaying. He grabs a cane and slowly rises to greet you. He gives you an unsteady bow, waves for food and drink, and settles down into his throne again. I am Governor Ayato. I am in charge here. All answer to me. We are honored that the prince comes. We will help however we can. I, Prince Matthew of Haven, gratefully accept your welcome. Well spoken, young prince. It has been so long since our queen remembered that we are here. He laughs dryly. I wonder if we are still on your maps. Anyway, I knew that you were coming. I made sure to have a report ready. Give me your report. All is well in the Lodaga. Our forts are secure. Tribute is being paid. Our soldiers are largely safe. The land is peaceful. Our queen does not need to be concerned. My philosophy regarding dealing with the Roe continues to be justified. That is all. The Lodaga is peaceful now, you think so? Well, it is peaceful by the standards of the Rokaj. I mean, this wild land is never fully peaceful. However, it meets a reasonable standard of peacefulness. Are you aware that raiders tried to kill me? That is a tragic insult. However, as I understand it, all of the raiders who entered the gentle coast have been slain. They committed a crime, and then they were brought to swift, brutal justice. This matter seems settled. And what is your philosophy regarding the Roe? The Rokaj is a violent place. They hate being controlled by outsiders, but they will tolerate it if they are handled with a very light touch. As long as they are never provoked, we can profitably rule here forever. As you investigate, please let yourself be guided by my wisdom. When you see how strong our control is, I'm sure you will keep me in my post. Has this been working so far? It has been a century since the Great Uprising. The Rokaj never have been so peaceful or so productive. The only unrest is a handful of brigands and cobwolves in the hills. Also, a pathetic attack, attack on you that was easily defeated. What about all the raiders? The Lodaga always has raiders. Raiding is their favorite activity, their eternal love and hobby. Rasa Lawita will probably complain about them to you, but only because he wants more authority and resources. Don't be fooled. The Ro tend to be wily and dishonest. Have any Havenites been attacked? Our soldiers are involved in a few enduring situations. Nothing that we don't usually have to face in the row. Nothing that will cost us great strength or wealth. Thank you for your report. I'll begin my investigations. 
Of course, I will be here doing my job if you have any more questions. Just remember that the Rokaj can never be peaceful or safe. He coughs. What you see out in the hills is just the normal state of things. Uh, you are Haven's governor here. He scratches at the arm of his throne with a long gray fingernail. I am. It is my honor, my life's work. My effectiveness has kept me in this post for a very, very long time. How long have you had this post? I only recently reached my 30th year. The sands of the little dog tend to scour all life into nothingness, but I endure. It testifies to the wisdom of my policies. How'd you get this position? The only true way for a Havenite to advance. Unrelenting hard work. I served as council in several safer vassals. When this post became available, other councils were afraid of coming here. I leapt at the chance to volunteer in this grim place. I sacrificed my happiness for the good of Haven. How have you been successful? When I came here, I studied the Rokaj. I talked to them. I read histories. I sent out spies. With effort, I was able to develop two principles through which the Rokaj can be ruled by Haven permanently. What are your basic principles? One, the Ro always lie. They have some deep truth in them, usually something about hating Haven. They will never tell you how they really feel. They just say what you want to hear. Two, this doesn't matter. All they really care about is not being provoked. As long as you leave them alone as much as possible, they do their clan business and pay their taxes. That seems pretty reasonable. And uh, how has this worked lately? Extremely well. I mean, yes, there's been some bumps lately. That happens sometimes. We'll hang a few raiders in the sun to dry, and we will all have calm again. Um, I need to know about the... Mm. Governor Iato sits in his throne and sips from his wine with trembling fingers. You aren't sure how he was able to hold such an important post for so long. Then again, this is not a luxury post. Miserable weather. Not a lot of wealth to extract. Sand. Plus the dangers of rebellion. It must be hard to find good volunteers. Yeah, we should probably, probably be recording these visits too, now that I think about it. Um, I need to know about the chaos in the Lodaga. To be fair, things are, by Rokash standards, entirely calm and peaceful. Because of this, our soldiers are being kept close to home and we're not wasting money keeping our forts at a high level of alert. There are reports of higher than usual levels of raider activity in the northern Daga. Some forts and mines have temporarily rarely been taken. There is one urgent situation, but it will soon be settled without royal involvement. When did the extra raid start? Let's record all this. I'm not sure. Rosa Luita complains so much that his crises tend to flow into each other. A few months ago, I think. I probably have a record of it. The raiders attempt to kill me. A shameful display, I agree, though you immediately showed that scattered band of thugs the power of Haven. I will make sure that penalties are paid. Enough to hurt, but not enough to cause a rebellion. What are you de doing to deal with the raiders? Little at this point. Rosa Luita's warriors already reclaimed most of the southern Daga. There is a lot of danger in the northern Daga. But that is always true. Horrible place. It is not a matter that should require great attention, though Rosa Luita disagrees. What can I say? He is young. What is the urgent situation? The northern and southern Daga are connected by the Malachite Pass. It was surrounded by raiders, as I understand it, a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, a large patrol of Havenite soldiers were staying there when the raiders arrived. They are trapped there at the moment. Haven soldiers are under siege. Siege seems a very lofty word for the situation. They have stone walls and provisions. The raiders are sure to get bored and wander off before our soldiers are in any danger. How long can they last? I don't know. Weeks? Months? We are watching the situation. That tower tends to have plenty of stores in the lower caves, so our people should be fine. Hmm. What is being done to free them? If they are ever in real danger, we will act in a decisive way that doesn't disrupt the overall political situation. For now, though, there is no need for action. I don't want to provoke the Doggins by marching a large Havenite force up their roads. Hmm. I should go save them. Hmm, you are the prince, so that glory is your right. Also, you can travel freely without provoking rebellion. That is what I hope, anyway. I would talk to Ross and Luita before engaging in that sort of entertainment, though. Oh, uh, your strategy makes sense. You may continue. I am flattered, prince. Of course, if you decide to go to the Malachite Pass to do a bit of hunting on your own, it might improve the overall situation. Um, 
you're an expert on the Lodaga. As much as any Haven Knight can be, the clans here, they are very close-knit. Hard to understand. Still, they are people. The Rokas are like everywhere else, and yet different. His voice is strangely flat. It's tired and raspy. You wonder when he last expressed a strong emotion. You really think that your knowledge is superior to others? Many complain about my style of rule, but there is one thing that can't be questioned. I am here. I talk to them. I wander their roads, breathe in their sand. I have been lied to by the Rokaj more than any man alive. My knowledge isn't perfect, but yes, it is superior. You know, I kind of like this guy. How is it like everywhere else? They have the needs and hopes of all humans. They want security, wealth, the rule of law. They want to be free of fear and be able to pass their wealth down to their children. As long as these things are given and we don't provoke or insult them, we can rule here forever. And how is it different? Oh, all nations are different. All vassals have unique qualities. The low Daga does have a certain peculiar beliefs, but who doesn't? The important thing to remember is their touchiness, their pride and paranoia, and that we can never trust them. If they are too fiercely provoked, you get a great uprising. They have peculiar beliefs. A few. The most important one is they can keep their women at home, locked away in their clan stockades. This practice is an artifact of the harsher days, when raiders stole not only goods, but people as well. Of course, I do nothing to change this practice. That would be a major provocation. What was the great uprising? A century ago, the Roe decided that Haven had provoked them too far. At the same time, Havenites forgot to never trust the Roe. The result? A sudden, unexpected, bloody attack. This was followed by an even bloodier counterattack. Haven held the Roe, and we learned a valuable lesson. Tread lightly and never trust them. How can they be our vassals when we can't trust them? He lets out, lets out a soft, raspy laugh. It's very easy, actually. We provide security, settle the worst disputes, and collect taxes. Then they don't care if we are here. Uh, the queen has sent me to check in on our vassals here. He sort of sinks into his chair, like a big pudding. I expected as much. This is a standard diplomatic mission. A long overdue one, I might add. I will, of course, aid your investigation as much as possible. I welcome being tested because it only gives more proof to my basic principle. You don't seem very concerned. This is the Rokaj. We've had no major uprisings. Our holdings here are profitable. The people respect us and accept their vassalage. I could not be doing better. Uh, what is your basic principle? Do not provoke the rank the Rokaj. They are a violent and impulsive people, but they are very hard to focus and organize. As long as you don't make them angry and give them a cause to focus around, they will be docile. That is why I've not fully maintained the forts. If they were built up, they would provoke the row. If we arm the forts, we make them need to be armed. Why bother? Hmm. I'll be passing judgment on you as a governor. He nods. He looks sleepy. I expected as much. I have maintained peace and prosperity. I have no apologies. I have an idea of how to proceed. He seems to get sleepier the longer you talk. I welcome your opinions, young prince. I sometimes wonder what you will tell the queen. You have maintained peace for a long time. That counts in your favor. The edges of his mouth twitch upward. It's quite an effort for his facial muscles. It does indeed. I am grateful. I hope you pass this wisdom on to General Miranda. Oh, I guess we already judged him then. Hmm. I need permission to go to the Flint, Plit, Flint Pit claim. Hmm? Oh, you've been talking to Council Opal. She is young. She has an active frame of mind. Still, we've been passive enough of late to afford a small provocation. Plus, it is our mine. Your permission is granted. That is all I need. Thank you for dropping by. I now return to my long vigil serving Haven. Alright. I have proven principles. The Rokaj, often called the Rose, a wild mountainous vassal state of Haven located on the southern coast. It has been part of Haven's glorious empire for about two centuries, and its membership has been turbulent. The Roe is a wild martial place. The people of the Rokaj live in high mountains and narrow valleys. They are a quiet and stoic people, a land of fierce, independent warriors. Haven has had an unusually difficult time controlling the mountains on the Rokaj. 
There has been a constant small rebellions even during the calmest of times. A century ago, there was a major uprising. A vicious years-long rebellion almost expelled Haven. This strife is happily in the past. When Queen Sharon III of Haven married consort Darmal, a lord of the row, it ushered in a new age of peace and prosperity for these two peoples. Cool. Oh, that's where we can stay and sleep. And that one's locked and we don't have the key. Yeah, so I guess we don't have to. I guess I... I guess I judged him. Um... I have permission to go to the Flint Pit, Flint Pit claim. Then if it starts producing building materials again, I can send them out for your use. You can rebuild the forts. That claim belongs to Haven, so we just need to control it. Unfortunately, we don't control it right now. You can help us get it back. Where do I go? The claim is to the east. Follow the road and look for the signs. What is the situation there? Rasa Luita did a very good job of hunting down the raiders in the hills there. He has lots of troops and commands them well. However, some of those razors hid in our claim. It's Haven's land, so the Rasta says he won't defend it for us. You'll have to kill some raiders. Should be easy. Just talk to our manager there for more information. Tell me about this claim. Haven bought it from the Lodaga 50 years ago. It's a really productive quarry, and we've only just started mining out the crystals under the main pit. It's hard to get good workers out here, though, which is why we use convicts. You use convicts. Yes, we're one of two mines in the Rokaj that imports criminals. Some crimes require serious punishment, but death would be excessive. Those types get sent out here to dig. I'm here to judge. Um, okay. There's that taken care of. <clears throat> and I believe that is it for Azam. Um, we went in here, right? It was the tavern. Drowning Scorpion. They had no relevant lore. They did have Regigamak and Galabas. Um, that's the Stoneworkers Hall. And this is the Trade Hall. All right, so I think we're pretty much done here. Um, let's check our journal. Storage base three for Leto, Jackson Scar, for Envoy Sharon, Stone for the Taking, Honored Ricks and Azam, the Quarry, the Drake Trade for Andesite, the Flint Pit Claim, what about, what did Galabas and, um, the other dude want? I forget already, um, oh, he's judging from the High Litha and Reggie Gamak is, is looking for Sorene. I'm surprised that hasn't been marked in the journal. Sorene. Oh, there it is. Under across the row. Cool. Alright, so very much progress made, guys. Um, I'm going to see how long we've been playing. 43 minutes. Okay, so we should save here. Next time, we may head to our fort. Um, We may head to the Flint Pit Claim. We may head down to the Rudico Ruins or just explore in these general areas. And, uh, yeah, might return to the Tower of the Rudico to get that relevant lore that we found there. And I think there was one in... I want to say Silen. Because where else would it be? It would have to have been in Silen. And we'll do some more crafting. Or we'll, we'll get to all this stuff. This is what's on the menu, though. Um, so hopefully you guys join me for that. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys and gals. Um, feel free to join me for more. Much love, peace, and joy, guys. Next time, much, I mean, 
all sorts of stuff to come. So I hope you'll stay tuned and I'll see you guys then. Peace out.